If anyone travels on a road in search of knowledge, Allah will cause him to travel on one of the roads to paradise. The superiority of the learned man over the devout is like that of the night when the moon is full against the distant stars. One of the things I'd hoped would happen was that women would come to see the show. Um, I discussed it with um, the organizers, the people who ran the mosque, and they were very open to it. So on the day of the exhibition itself, on the opening, many women who would normally never have entered a mosque were there looking around, admiring the beauty of the place and enjoying the presence uh, of what was both a sacred and a beautiful place. One of the things we want to do through this exhibit is to remind people of the true tenets of Islam, the fact that knowledge is what it holds at the highest level, that it is inclusive, that it is open, tolerant. Uh, and I believe that it's not simply the mosque itself. This is perhaps the core of every religion. Love thy neighbor. Uh, be forgiving. We seem to have moved away a lot from that and the core elements today that people recognize religion for is conflict, is tension, is personal gain in some cases. That religion has always intended and played a different role is what we'd like to remind people of through this exhibition. The reason for this mosque was quite special. We recognize that Islam gave a lot of store to knowledge and that knowledge and learning were the key principles of this religion. Of course, prayer is important, piety is important, but the mosque, which today has become the seat of prayers, was once not only a seat of knowledge, but also a community space. It was for the people to be used in the full sense of the word. It was a place of prayer. It was also a place of learning. It was a hospital. It was a leisure center. It encompassed so many activities that were essential to everyday life. The Prophet had invited state dignitaries who visited him to meet him in the mosque. He allowed women to stay in the mosque for safety. He invited non-Muslims to come and pray in his mosque. There was once a troop from Abyssinia, an artist troop, who wanted to perform in Medina and they approached the Prophet and asked where they might perform. Do it in my mosque, he said. They performed and they exhibited in the mosque and perhaps the earliest exhibit of art took place in, in a mosque itself. This mosque is perfectly flat. It does not have a raised platform, a pedestal for the Imam or the Muslim everyone is equal. That again is one of the core principles of Islam. As I was working there, I noticed a cricket ball, red, blending in with the bare bricks that the mosque had been built with. I was curious. Later during the Friday prayers, a cricket ball came into the mosque and landed amidst the, 
the people praying. I was a little bit worried. It's not the sort of thing I thought they would take kindly to. But the man who caught the ball looked at it, smiled, threw it back to the kids. That, for me, represented a very different type of mosque, which people used in a different way. I saw children playing. I saw a goat at one stage. The Khadim kept the mosque spotlessly clean. It was cool. Unlike other mosques, certainly in Bangladesh, or major mosques at least, there's no air conditioning. And even on a hot sunny day, the interior of the mosque is beautiful and cool. I saw people sleeping on the floor because it was so pleasant and welcoming. It reminds us of how much the mosque was integrated into everyday life. For me, when I did this exhibit, uh, it was very important to remember certain things. The fact that a woman had designed the mosque, her grandmother had provided the land for it, and that the way in which this mosque was designed incorporated some of the core principles of Islam.